Hello, this is Trip the Snake and welcome to this Captain of Industry tutorial about how to avoid dead sparrows for beginners. So this video will focus on the early game, which means that we'll cover pretty much every kind of dead spirals that could happen to you uh, from the beginning up to the assembly 2, so the electric assemblies. We could say that there is four types of dead spiral for the early game. The maintenance one, the food, the power and the diesel. All these different major components of your colony that I've just named interact with each other. So for example, if you have no maintenance, your vehicles and your buildings will break down and therefore you won't be able to deliver the food from your farms to your settlement. And before you know it, you'll have a dead spiral of food with your people starving. So beside the obvious recommendation of making sure that you have enough of those maintenance, food, power and diesel, I think it's important to go back to the start of the chain and understand the impact that all of these fundamental components, all of these fundamental ingredients can have a crucial impact on the survival of your colony. Maintenance needs mechanical parts and electronics. Food needs water and farm. Power needs diesel, pretty simple in the early game. And the diesel itself requires crude oil and coal. So if we take maintenance again as an example, even a new player will be aware that he needs to supply mechanical parts and electronics on a consistent basis. Still, many players will still eventually be surprised by the fact that they have no maintenance and everything starts to break down. Why is that? So one of the things that you need to do not only to resolve those issues, but also to avoid them, is to go back to the start of the chain. Because even if you have two or three assemblies dedicated to mechanical parts and electronics, you can still have no maintenance. Going back to the start of the chain, it's like a recipe. You need to go back to the basic ingredients that allow you to cook what you're cooking. In the case of maintenance, we can go with the mechanical parts, which are rather simple. It's only iron. So if you're not producing any, you need to go back to your iron mine. And then you need to do that little mental checklist. What do a mine need to function? It needs an excavator, it needs trucks, and those vehicles need fuel. Do you have enough of those? Maybe you're not mining enough. Now, if you feel like your trucks are waiting with iron at the mining tower, clearly there's another issue. Are you smelting enough? Then you look at your smelters and they're not working. Why is that? Is there enough coal? And then it leads you to the coal mining. So you can see that there's a lot of little steps to look at, but eventually this has to become a second nature, always going back to the start of the chain to diagnose the issues that you have or that you could have. It might seem like an obvious strategy, but I can tell you it's a common mistake, a common oversight by the players that won't go back to the start of the chain to diagnose these issues. They will be unaware that they're not mining enough or either they're not smelting enough or they don't have a logistic system that is efficient enough to deliver those ingredients, those materials to the assemblies that will in turn produce, for example, the mechanical parts. Now, this reasoning, this strategy of going back to the start of the chain applies to all these sectors, the maintenance, the food, the power and the diesel. And I think that a common oversight is the coal. Coal is needed for many sectors as a side ingredient. Coal is not needed as the main ingredient like iron for iron bar, right? But it's needed to make the smelter work. It's needed to make the rubber factory producing. It's needed to make the diesel that will be used for the power. So always keep an eye on your coal mining, but also its distribution. As a side note for maintenance production, please take into consideration that it needs twice the mechanical parts that it needs electronics. Personally, 90% of the time I have a maintenance shortage, it's not the electronics that lacks, it's the mechanical parts. And it's interesting to know because electronics are way more complicated to produce. It requires purified copper and it required rubber. Meanwhile, the mechanical parts only require iron. So when I do have a maintenance shortage, it's because I didn't follow the step of going back to the start of the chain and realize that I didn't have enough iron or that I wasn't delivering enough. And there's also that possibility of my logistic system not being developed enough, not being efficient enough, therefore not being able to deliver those mechanical parts produced and waiting, sitting in the assemblies to the maintenance buildings. Beside that very fundamental strategy of going back to the start of the chain to diagnose issues and potential issues, one thing you can do is add storage. Seems simple enough, right? But it does act as a buffer, therefore giving you a bit of a breathing room when your production is not enough. There's not one single best way to build a storage system. I think it's something that can be quite personal. Still, I think it's a common strategy to store the critical ingredients needed to make your colony work. So electronic and mechanical parts for the maintenance, store some food, definitely, and you can also store some diesel, right? This is the bare minimum. After that, you can decide to have more storage like iron, coal, copper, but you have to make sure that you have the logistic system to support that because the more storage, the more deliveries. And the more deliveries you need to do, the more trucks you need and eventually conveyors. 
All this pressure on the logistics system bring us to another very important concept, a problem met by many new players, and even veteran players, I name overexpansion or overextension. This concept means that a player will build his base too quickly without supporting it with the key ingredients we've talked about. A common example is maintenance. You build your base too fast, more and more buildings and vehicles require maintenance, and you didn't adjust your maintenance production enough to support that growth. It's the same thing with logistics. You might have now new buildings demanding ingredients, but you don't have the trucks to make the deliveries. And it's very possible that the player didn't adjust his diesel production, therefore not being able to fuel those new trucks, he just built to support those new deliveries. So you can understand why we call that a death spiral, right? It snowballs into more and more issues. Captain of industry is not a race. There is no pressure to grow your factory quickly. So make sure that you expand incrementally, making sure that you produce all those fundamental goods and services like maintenance, food, power, and diesel. In conclusion, make sure that you go back regularly to the start of the chain of production to make sure that you are not being caught by surprise. You don't want to do that just to solve the issues. You want to go there to prevent them. And eventually it will be even more important because you will have long conveyors, which means that if you have a shortage because of the length of traveling on those conveyors, there will be a delay before you are aware of the issue. So when you will solve it, you will still need those new product entering the conveyor belt to be delivered to the buildings. It takes time. Also give yourself a bit of a breather with storage without abusing it so you don't put too much pressure on your logistics system. Finally, make sure that you avoid overextension or overexpansion. Grow your factory slowly and incrementally, making sure that you're supporting that growth with the essential goods and services that you need. Might it be diesel for the new trucks or for the power generation? Might it be food for the increase of population or mechanical parts and electronics for the maintenance? There's no rush. Take your time. Enjoy the game. And this concludes our tutorial. I hope you enjoyed it. I hope it helped. Thank you for watching. Take care. See you next time.